Hello, and welcome to the Texas Instruments OMAP 3530 and OMAP 3503 Developer Series, Module 2. In Module 1, we created a new virtual machine and installed a distribution of damn small Linux. In this module, we will disable the DSL beeps. We'll then examine the Windows networking configuration on the host PC, and finally configure networking within DSL, which is the guest operating system. Hello, and welcome to the Texas Instruments OMAP 3530 and OMAP 3503 Developer Series, Module 2. In Module 1, we created a new virtual machine and installed a distribution of damn small Linux. In this module, we will disable the DSL beeps. We'll then examine the Windows networking configuration on the host PC, and finally configure networking within DSL, which is the guest operating system. In the last module, we created a new virtual machine and then installed the damn small Linux distribution. We're going to begin this section by configuring our networking. We can take a look at this virtual machine settings. Note that there are two Ethernet cards, two network interface cards built into this virtual machine. The first one is bridged and the second one uses network address translation. If I look at the network connections on the host PC, then you'll see two physical connections. The first, which is labeled local area connection, is the wired Ethernet connection on this PC. The second is, as the name implies, a wireless network connection. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect the wired connection to the bridged network interface card on the virtual machine. This will be used to talk to the development board. The wireless network connection, which is what actually talks to the internet on this PC, we're going to configure to the second network interface card and use network address translation so that both the virtual machine and the host PC can access the internet simultaneously. DSL starts up the first time showing you this welcome message. Just go to X shells. You can left click on the desktop or right click. It'll bring up this menu. Pull up a terminal and I'm going to use the VI editor. I can do vi.x init rc. This is the initialization file for the X shell or the X server. If I scroll down here to line 20, hit I to go into insert mode put in a hash mark which will comment this line out, then escape to go back to command mode, colon W to write the file, colon Q to quit. Um, before we quit though, I'm going to put in a second item. Go back to I for insert mode. I'm going to put in a command X set B and 0. What this does is it sets the beeping function in X to, to off. I can now hit escape, W to write again, and then Q. By the way, this isn't going to take care of all of the beeping. I'll show you a few more tricks in a moment. Now we can also edit a file, etc. Input RC. In this file, go to line 6, I to insert set bell style none. Between these two it should take care of most of the beeps in the system. There's one more sort of elephant gun that takes care of just about everything so I like to do this as well. VI etc. Well let me go ahead and just if I run list and then the etc directory RC asterisk you can see that there's a number of directories RC0 all the way through RC6 and then RCS so these are the scripts for the various run levels uh, so what we can do is I'm gonna sudo vi etc RCS and then the SO1 DSL config script 
just go down to the bottom of the script. There's that fantastic beeping again. And just at the end of this script, I'm going to do mod probe dash R for remove PC speaker. What this will do is, uh, as, as you can see, remove the speaker module from the kernel. <laughs> and this does an excellent job of, of removing the beep. So I can write that file and quit. Now that we've taken care of that, let's go ahead and set up our networking. So again, I can left click, go to System and Control Panel. And you'll see there's a nice utility here, Netcard Config. So if I click on that, uh, this gives me a place where I can configure the Netcard. So recall that we have two connections into the virtual machine, two virtual NIC cards. Uh, the first one is bridged, and we're going to bridge that onto the cabled Ethernet connection on the PC. This is what we're going to use to communicate to the OMAP development kit. And so I want to configure it in a static configuration. I'm going to give it 192.168.10.2. Uh, the only thing that's really important here is that you put it on a subnet subnet that's not going to conflict with you know any of the other networking on your PC so uh, my router assigns addresses in the 192.168.1 subnet so by putting this in the 10 subnet we can guarantee that there won't be any conflict uh, hit apply to save and then you can just go back up and change the interface to ETH1 ETH1 is going to be the network address translation. So this is going to be how we actually talk to the real internet. And we'll want to just use a DHCP in order to acquire the IP address, etc. Hit apply and then exit. I can close out here. If you want to see what actually happened there, if I list the OPT directory, you'll see three shell files in this OPT directory. Boot local is a shell file that's run when you boot up. So if we just cap that out, you can see that this startup script is going to run these two subscripts, ETH0 and ETH1. Oops. And you can see that the settings that we just entered, all that all the DSL did is it just dumped these into these files. So uh, you could even modify these by hand if if you wished. So now that we have our networking set up, what we can do is just uh, I'll just run these by hand this time. But obviously these scripts will be run each time that you start up DSL. So. You know what, it doesn't like, uh, glad I did this. Let's go ahead and, it doesn't like the fact that we didn't put in a gateway. Because this command right here expects a, a gateway to come. So I can just take that out. So now we can now if I run if config stands for interface config you can see that we've got our interfaces configured ETH0 and ETH1 according to what we specified now that we've got that, we can test our connection. I'm going to just ping www.ti.com. And you can see that we're getting a response. 